I'll talk now about this question, how to work in study groups, because uh, we often suggest to our students that they should work in study groups. And uh, that's not just because we want you to fall in love and get married, have children that can study at MF so we can maintain the population here. But it's also because we know that it's a very good way at learning. I mentioned in another lecture how colloquial groups is one of those active forms of learning where you, your learning outcome is very big. So it's uh, fun to be in a study group. and uh, It's a social event, so it's very nice to do it. But it's also uh, something that you can learn a lot from. And I'll say something now about why it's uh, it's such an effective way of learning and also say something about how one should go about to study in colloquial groups. So different reasons first then for why it's efficient, an efficient way of learning. First of all, of course, you can ask your, the other people in the group. They can explain things for you that you're wondering about. If there was something in the textbook that you didn't understand and so on, they can explain it to you. But it's also very efficient and helpful that you can explain to others that you can um, Think about how do I explain this to others, then you have uh, worked actively with it in your mind and it's a lot easier to understand and remember. It's also an efficient way of working because you can uh, share different parts of the curriculum between you and you can say now you make a mind map of this chapter or this book or this article and I do this and we can present it for each other. And uh, not just the curriculum but also the different learning outcomes, or you can look at old uh, exam assignments and um, say that you make you suggest an answer to this one, I'll suggest an answer to that one, and then uh, you can prepare for the exam in that way. <coughs> when you uh, form a study group, it's uh, wise to talk a bit about the group in the beginning, to uh, to um, find out what are the different expectations of the people in the group, um, talk about the different roles. Uh, shall we have a one who is the leader every time, or can we have a that uh, one person every time is the leader, or should we have no leader, or how how sh should we do that? It's it's wise to have a leader in 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 some some way, but it can be either a rotating system or one person is the is the leader. Uh, but instead, if, if it's uh, unclear, then you'll just sit and wait for each other and um, things doesn't happen as efficiently as if there is a leader. It's good also to talk about the motivation. What is the level of ambition of the different persons in the group? How often do we want to meet? How much do we want to work and write and present and so on? Um, because it should be roughly at the same level. If, if it's very different, uh, then you should rather maybe divide the group or find someone else and, um, and form a study group with. Also, uh, smart to uh, say just in the beginning at the first meeting, we don't want any free riders in this study group. Uh, everybody has to participate and roughly on the same level um, because it's demotivating and uh, very disturbing for the group if, if one or several persons are just floating along and they don't contribute, they just get uh, what the other people are, um, get notes and everything from the others and, and they feel exploited. So say that uh, in the beginning uh, to maintain a bit of social control and expectation there. <coughs> so um, in addition then to uh, explaining stuff to each other and discussing the curriculum and, um, and uh, sharing notes, you can also uh, use the study group when you write uh, your own papers and, uh, and assignments. First, then you, you have to write them for yourself, but you can then present them when you have a first draft or something. You can present it to the others in the group and ask for comments. And I have some advice then on how to do that uh, if you want to um, present papers to each other. And first, some advice to the writer. The writer should... <coughs> First, um, ask concrete questions because it's not so easy for the other people who are responding to know what they should say, but if you ask concrete questions, they will usually have some thoughts about that. So you can get much more out of them if you ask concrete questions like, did you understand this paragraph? Was it clear what I said in this sentence? What do you think of this? Um, 
uh, this point or this argument and, and so on. Um, and then they will give you answers. So you can ask when you're discussing it, but you can also put questions in the text. Um, what about this, uh, this headline or this argument or this point or this sentence and, and so on and, uh, and get a uh, response on that. <coughs> Another uh, tips uh, or uh, suggestion. Um, you don't have to answer. One can be a bit uh, stressed if people are asking questions or uh, making criticisms and so on that you think, oh, I have to answer this, I have to defend this uh, and so on. But uh, you can just relax and think that, well, I don't have to answer the questions. I can just say thank you for that uh, note or that question or that comment. I'll, make a, I'll write it down and, and think about it. That's, uh, that's fair and can even be wise because if you write down a question without answering, it will uh, stay with you in your subconscious uh, subconsciousness and, and your brain will work, work on it even if you're not thinking on it. So it makes it uh, more relaxed to... Uh, to uh, get response then, if you know that I don't have to answer, it's no problem that I just say, I'll think about that. To the reader, <coughs> say something positive first. Because uh, the person presenting can be quite nervous, it's... Uh, you can attach some identity to and some of your academic pride or whatever uh, to, to the text. And if uh, people start criticizing you right away, you can feel demotivated and think that, oh, I'm on the wrong shelf in life. I should have been a janitor instead or, or something. Um, so it's very comforting and nice if, if people start by saying something positive because then you think, well, um, I'm not uh, totally uh, on the wrong track, I'm uh, onto something, uh, but I need to improve something maybe. But uh, it's very, uh, one can be very nervous just before the right response, so it's, uh, it's good to say something positive first, and you can also, it's always possible to find something nice to say. Uh, if everything stinks, you can say, well, at least there's a lot of potential here. Uh, so you'll find something um, and start by that. Next point is not say something negative, but ask questions. <coughs> Even when you have negative comments, it's good if you formulate them, ask questions. Why have you, instead of saying you shouldn't have done this, you can say, why have you done this? Or don't you think that that will, uh, well, it can be a leading question. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a more nice way of saying it, and it's more helpful uh, for the person who gets uh, a question to think about than, um, a negative comment that he or she wants to defend their, themselves against. So uh, try to formulate your criticism as uh, questions. Um, be concrete or as concrete as you can. Because if you just say, um, this is uh, generally good, but maybe you can try to improve the totality of it or something. It, it's not very helpful, but if you can give concrete suggestions, concrete examples, and point out which sentences and which arguments and so on you didn't understand or you think can be improved, that's very helpful. So it's not so, uh, so easy though, but uh, as mentioned, the writer should try also to ask concrete questions because then it's also easier to give concrete comments. <coughs> and one more point on this one, adjust the level. If there are some main problems, you think, in this paper and a lot of small problems, then you can focus on the main problems and you can leave the small small problems for later. You don't have to say 100 things uh, that should be improved. Uh, because then again, the person will be demotivated and so on. But if, if you point out, well, here are three important things to work on, then they're motivated and will continue working. And then the next time you can say three new things and so on, better than to say 100 things uh, right, right away, because that can be quite demotivating. Um, yes, that's what I had to say about working in study groups.